Finish what you start. Your brain is wired to chase closure. Every time you finish something, it can be anything, even something as small as washing the last dish, sending the email, completing a workout, you trigger a chemical reward, dopamine, that makes you feel good and urges your brain to do it again. That small burst is how momentum is built in your life. Most people never reach it because they quit halfway, chasing easier pleasures that deliver quick hits of dopamine. The brain learns that avoidance feels safer than completion, and the cycle repeats. To your brain, it can do easier work but still receive dopamine, so why would it even bother doing the harder but more beneficial task? If you change your mindset and you push through and close the loop, you're teaching yourself that effort pays off more than escape. Finishing becomes its own addiction. It doesn't have to be huge, just something with a clear end. Read 10 pages of a book or complete that last rep. Every small win rewires the system in your brain. Over time, your brain stops craving the comfort of quitting and starts craving the satisfaction of being done. I bet a lot of you watching won't even make it to the end of this video. A decent amount of people are already gone. This just proves how a complete video with constant moving and a voiceover isn't enough stimulation for your brain to want to continue watching. Take boring breaks. Most people sabotage their discipline in the moments they call rest. They work for an hour on a mildly stimulating and mildly rewarding task, but it's easy. But then they take a break and flood their brain with hyperstimulation, scrolling at 100 miles per hour, gaming, eating an extremely unhealthy meal. They do all of these things and then expect to return to focus as if nothing happened. Your brain has now got a new baseline for dopamine. Remember, dopamine is the chemical that causes motivation. So now your brain will only be motivated to do things that release as much dopamine as scrolling, gaming, or eating junk food. Good luck finding any hard work that fits in that category. The next task can't compete with the thrill you just gave yourself, so you start to avoid it. The fix isn't removing breaks. You want to change how you spend them. Let your rest be boring, stretch, walk, stare at the ceiling, make tea. Give your mind space to breathe instead of drowning in noise. When your downtime stops spiking your senses, returning to effort feels natural again. You may even be motivated to get back to work. Do one thing at a time. Your brain isn't built for multitasking. Every time you switch tasks, checking a message mid-set, glancing at a notification, flipping between tabs, you force your mind to restart the focus process from zero. That restart costs time, but more importantly, it kills momentum. This relates back to the point, finish what you start. Multitasking feels productive because your hands are busy, but cognitively, it's not working. Your attention is split, and being able to use your brain in depth becomes impossible. The fix is very simple, but it's not easy. When you eat, eat. You don't need to have a Sidemen Among Us video playing before every meal. When you work, focus on the task at hand and check your phone after. Try this. Go to the toilet without taking your phone. Don't try to merge everything into one endless stream of half-focus. Single-tasking rebuilds the mental pathways that let you drop into flow, that rare zone where time disappears and effort feels easy. That is the optimal state for working on hard things and cannot be achieved when you're doom-scrolling while finishing your assignment. The Two-Minute Rule Starting something is always the hardest and most intimidating part. Your brain exaggerates how painful a task will be. So it talks you into waiting for motivation, forcing you to procrastinate. The fix to this is super simple. Lower the entry cost. Tell yourself you'll just do it for two minutes. You can write one sentence, stretch for one song, vacuum one room. That tiny action tricks your brain into crossing the line between thinking and doing. Once you've started something, the resistance to that task disappears and momentum takes over. Most of the time, you'll end up going longer without even noticing. You don't need to commit to the whole thing, just the first step. This isn't about finishing fast or only doing two minutes of work. It's about proving to your brain that work isn't dangerous. Once you start, it's really easy to keep going. Cut cheap dopamine. I know most of you watching won't cut out all cheap dopamine. So I've got something in the next point if that is you. 
But if you are willing to cut out all forms of cheap dopamine, your brain will rewire very quickly, and then you will nearly instantly crave hard work. Think about it logically. You remove any and all things that give you cheap dopamine. Things like your phone, video games, YouTube, Netflix, junk food, a vape, or any sort of nicotine. Then the only way your brain can possibly get dopamine is through doing something hard, which is why you clicked on this video in the first place. But for most people, they don't want to completely get rid of all of those things. So here's something else you can do. Dopamine loading. Every day you wake up, your dopamine levels have generally reset pretty well. The same goes for your dopamine baseline. This can be used to your advantage, but most people use it to their disadvantage. The second they wake up, they hop straight onto TikTok, doom scrolling in bed, which as you know by now is a massive dopamine spike. But they then get up and try to go to work or study or do some sort of difficult task, which won't release anywhere near as much dopamine. This makes it very difficult to actually get the work done. You will feel bored, annoyed, and won't be able to hold your focus for very long at all. Here's how you can actually use it to your advantage. When you wake up in the morning, you need to focus on doing the things you need to do rather than things that release a lot of dopamine. Wake up, have a shower, and get straight into work, studying, whatever it is that you have to do. As the day goes on, maintain the state of low dopamine, which actually feels high, until you reach the end of your day when you're not going to be trying to do any more low dopamine tasks. Once you reach the end of your work, then you can start loading in all of the high dopamine, low effort tasks like doom scrolling and junk food. If that was difficult to understand, you want to do the tasks in your day, starting from low dopamine releasing tasks and moving up into high dopamine releasing tasks. That way, your baseline will not drop throughout the entire day. Adopting a growth mindset. Most people work hard for some outcome that comes once they finish the hard work. Maybe it's money or it's a social outcome, which is great and perfectly fine. But working hard at something for only the sake of a reward that comes after can make the work a lot more challenging as well as deter you from wanting to work hard again in the future. Switching your view to a growth mindset, striving to be better and rewarding the hard work and effort along the way rather than just the final outcome, helps your brain release dopamine during the challenge, not just after. When you're able to attach pain, hardship, and friction to an internal reward system, even if it's just being proud of yourself, you will start to access dopamine release during the actual hard work. This not only makes the hard work more enjoyable, you actually make it less painful and make yourself more efficient at the task. When you're doing something hard, be happy that it is hard and keep going. Hard work is where you find the biggest rewards. Dopamine stacking. Most people don't realize how much they overload their brain's reward system. Some people may think smashing pre-workout, pumping loud music, and doing some hard exercise is amazing for you. While it may be good physically, this is called dopamine stacking. Stacking multiple dopamine releasing activities on top of each other. While it may help during the exact task, Afterwards, you will have a dip in your dopamine baseline. Not only that, if you ever try to work out without the music and pre-workout, you will be much less inclined to do the hard work. Dopamine stacking becomes dangerous when people watch TV, scroll on their phone, and eat junk food all at the same time, then wonder why they can't focus on a less stimulating task. If that's you, avoid it if you want any chance at actually being able to do hard work. Deliberately do hard things. Your brain only adapts when it's challenged. Every time you avoid something difficult, not having a cold shower, not doing a tough workout, avoiding an uncomfortable conversation, you teach your brain that comfort equals safety and discomfort equals danger. When you deliberately do something hard, you trigger a small stress response. After you complete it, your body releases dopamine and serotonin as a reward for overcoming that stress. Over time, your brain begins to associate effort with relief. You don't need to go extreme. You just need to be consistent. Lift heavier a couple times a week. Speak when you want to stay silent. Wake up when it's the last thing you want to do. Every deliberate hardship tells your brain, we can handle this. Eventually, it stops resisting hard work 
and actually chases it. Giphy Hard Work Turning hard work into a game makes effort visible. You can see progress, track points, and reward actions. Hard work often feels abstract, so your brain doesn't know when to celebrate. You can fix that by creating systems, count task scores, race the clock, assign levels and missions instead of vague goals. Small wins release motivation. Make the challenge hard enough to stay interesting, but achievable enough to be rewarding. If you giphy your life, you will improve fast. Work with other people. Hard work is contagious. Your brain mirrors whoever it's around. If you're around people who focus deeply and delay comfort, you copy it unconsciously. If you're around distraction, your brain normalizes avoidance. Working alongside others creates pressure and accountability. Even silent co-working increases output because your brain interprets other people's focus as a cue to do the same. Surround yourself with people who treat discipline as survival, and your brain will adopt that identity. Dopamine Detox A dopamine detox is a short reset for your baseline of stimulation. It removes artificial dopamine sources, so your brain starts generating dopamine from real things, like progress and effort. The first days are painful, but once you withstand them, silence becomes pleasant, focus returns, and small tasks feel meaningful again. It resets your baseline and changes what your brain rewards. The only thing you cannot do is go straight back to artificial dopamine once it's over. That's the time to do hard things. If there's one thing to take away from this video, let it be this. If you are trying to do hard things, do the hard things before the easy, or the hard thing becomes much harder. And if you're ready to build habits that make your brain stronger every single day, your next step is watching this video right here.